I don't know about you, but I'm feeling fall. So today, tell me, I was 75 and the low was 54. Oh, it's there. It'll be it'll be like that again tomorrow, and then it's it's gonna get hot again. But it's like, you know, it's like it's like as fall's encroaching in, so we'll start having like those little spurts. Yes. Days. Remember last year when you and your daughter came into town and. I was so excited because it was beautiful fall weather, like a couple weeks before you arrived. Then you fucking landed and it was like 80 degrees. And then the day you left, it dropped right back to the 40s. You know, I bring the heat. You know, fucking keep it where you live. I don't live up here, so I can enjoy warm weather in October. Well, you know, my husband's going to Cleveland and um, it's like in the 60s Mm -hmm. during the day right now, which is like marvelous i'm Beautiful. just jealous that i can't go with him this don't worry time. It'll, it'll warm up again this week it, so. yeah next week it'll be hotter but still it's still yeah. like way more bearable like it was 90 something degrees here today and i was like i go to the dollar tree and there's halloween decorations like come on let's get oh, with it it's all right so pack full of halloween we're talking we're always talking about the like old people who are just always complaining about the weather always i don't know how many episodes we've started with this i'm gonna have to count Somebody should tell us because I don't think I'll do it. Well, I had no complaints to the weather. A high of 75, lower 54. I am in heaven. Bored. Hog heaven. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm saying this because you made a cake and I feel like cake is a colder weather situation. Kind of. Yeah, it sure is. Cake is an everyday situation, Mary Ellen. I agree. I I make a cake at any time, but I feel that it tastes even better when it's a little bit chilly out. It does. All right. So tell me about this cake because. I've been touting the amazingness of cock. I was going to say cock box. Well. <laughs> of cake box. Right. Box cake. And and so you have a recipe for me. Tell me about it. I do. And, you know, I just want to say, I know I made fun of you. And I will still make fun of you for making a snacking cake. Okay. The best kind of cake. But this is definitely a snacking cake. What does that mean to you? Like, you know, you just have it around. You just take a little bite of it. A snack. Like a fork. Yeah, you just take a fork and that's it. And snacking cake has to be like in a in a square pan. This was circular, but I understand what you mean by square. You know pan. what I mean? Like a nine by two. Just like a single layer sheet cake, basically. With like a nice thin layer of something gooey on top. And we're gonna get to that. Mm, of course. Tell me. Okay. So this is what I did. I saw this recipe on TikTok and I kind of fucked it up a little bit, but it turned out really well. So one box of vanilla cake. I guess you could really do any flavor, but I had I picked vanilla. I had vanilla, so that's what I did. And then I got one large can of crushed pineapple. The original recipe calls for one large can of like the ring pineapple and the juice. So that might be a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So you basically just throw the pineapple in a blender, throw the cake mix in a blender, two eggs and a two capful of capfuls of vanilla, and I blended it up. Beautiful, smooth batter came out. Took a circular dish. It was my springform pan and went ahead and just buttered it up. And then it took about a hearty handful of, I chopped up a milk chocolate bar. I just took a hearty handful of it and just threw it in there. I swear. Follow that. There's pine. Is there juice of the pineapple or just the pineapple? Well, because it's crushed. So there's going to be juice in it. And this is where I, I enjoy this recipe because I threw the chocolate in there because why the hell not? At this point, I realized mm-hmm. I put the wrong ingredient in. What were you supposed to put? It should have been the can of ring pineapple with the juice. I mean, okay. So, this yeah. Was right. Tomato, so, tomato. Thing, I think the ring pineapple had more liquid to it. All right. So, I threw it in, blended it up, put some, just a handful of chocolate chips in, mixed it in, baked it at 350 for 35 minutes, and then took it out. And then I realized I needed to put something on top of this. I just didn't want to put, like, powdered sugar on top of it. Which so is the worst. Think, Who does that? Yeah, like, it, it, that, that's like the fucking ass way out of it. Just don't put anything on it at this point. Don't make it. Just stay okay, home. Okay, just go to a fucking bakery and get a cake at this point, okay? Yes, shame. Shame. Seriously. Like, oh, put powder sugar on it. Literally, you might as well put nothing on this. Agreed. So, he took a can of condensed milk. And this is something from years of my childhood, Mari. He took a can of condensed milk, put it in the pressure cooker. You did? And I did. Took a can Aww. of condensed milk. You basically take a can of condensed milk and it's a pressure cooker. What is the one I have? 
It's not called the what pressure. Those, I forgot what they're called, and they're all the rage. I forgot. It has to, it's a two word thing. Pressure. It's. I don't remember. It's, Shit. Regardless. Yeah. Put it in your pressure cooker, and what you do is you fill it up with water just above the can. So you basically just take the wrapper off the can, and you fill it up with water just above the can. Close your pressure cooker and let it pressure cook for about 40 minutes. Instapot. Instapot. Thank you. I put it in my Instapot. I use a pressure cooker mode, put it in my Instapot. Fill the water up, like I said, just above the can. So wait, then, it doesn't float? No, because it's a can of condensed milk. It yeah, stays... I've never done this, so I have questions. Really? Yeah, yeah no, I've, never, I've eaten it, but I never made it. And so you, you pressure cook it on high for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and then let the pressure go away on its own. Take it out. Be careful. It's still going to be really hot. So you got to give it another 20 minutes before it cools. And then use a can opener and you open it up and you've turned your condensed milk into dulce de leche. Which is like a caramel. It's a caramel type thing. And I love the flavor of it because it's like that burnt sugary flavor. So good. So what I did is, is then I took the can of now dulce de leche and I put it in my stand mixer and I whipped it up. While it was hot? Well, it was still warm. Yes, okay. it was still warm. And I whipped it up and it became this very spreadable dulce de leche. And I spread it on top of the cake. And this shit was delicious. I think this is revolutionary. I do. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Because I think that we can, I would probably put it in the cold, the dulce de leche, mm-hmm. and then whip it. And I bet it would really whip up like like caramel frosting. It becomes almost like a caramel frosting. That's oh what it God, becomes. That sounds so The reason why I decided to do well was warm. So I had done this several times before, like back like when you and I were in college, I had played with this. And it, it just works up really nice when it's warm. I've never done it when it was cold. Mm-hmm. I also like the flavor of it when it's just like a little warm. So I also did it for myself so I could take a teaspoon out of it and taste You're it. like, bitch, I was hungry. I was just going to eat that. Yeah, I was like, you know what? <laughs> this fucking this literally looks delicious. <laughs> you know and what? that's what I did. How many eggs? Three? Two. Two eggs. What a weird fucking recipe. So I'm imagining it doesn't taste like pineapple. And the original recipe didn't call for eggs. But what happened is because I used a crushed pineapple, it was not liquefying enough for me. It was not becoming a batter enough. So I'm like, fuck it. Let me throw two eggs in there. At this point, Do let's see can. what happens. Put a little vanilla in there too. And how and, was the cake? Oh, it was like, you remember like a sponge cake back from like the 80s and 90s? That's like exactly what it kind of felt like. Like a little dry? No, it had like that. Sp- it was really moist. It had like the spongy texture to it. And you really didn't taste the pineapple whatsoever. Like you really almost or you no, didn't? No, really didn't taste it. Okay, good. Because I don't want almost. Mm-mm. This is like no. a hummingbird cake for you. This is like poor man's hummingbird cake. Oh, I like that. But we're going to call it the Sticky Cuban, right? Isn't that what we're calling this? Yeah, the Sticky Cuban. Because of our dulce de leche concoction? Yeah. It's a sticky I really Cuban. like this. And you know what? I really like the idea because it's actually not that different from putting like applesauce in a cake that's batter. what my mom compared it to she's like remember the 90s when we put applesauce and shit to bake it i'm like right but it came out pretty shitty remember those brownies i used to make with applesauce in it <laughs> the crusties brownies the crusties i'll never forget brownie. Like, it was like the one brownie mix i would buy remember? and then use applesauce and i had to under bake it just so it could taste edible you're like mariel i ate the whole pan but it had applesauce <laughs> The 90s. Oh <laughs> <laughs> you can sit and eat the whole entire pan, Marty. <laughs> they were so bad. Oh my God. They were hate, bad. You hate it when I made like, You're like, just, just make like the fucking brownie. <laughs> yeah, just fucking eat the brownie. If you want to put powdered sugar on that. By the way, I'm craving a brownie, like a big, but I don't want to make it. Like, I want to go to a bakery. Nobody does this, I feel, and get like a thick, fudgy brownie. From a bakery. And I feel like nobody makes them. I think when people think of brownies, I mean, like, I could like think in my head, I'm sure I can find places that serve brownies, but people, I don't think, think of brownies as something they would buy in a bakery, which I would buy the fuck out of a brownie. Right? If you had really good bakery brownies, I would buy your entire tray. Thank you. With no remorse. Yeah. We need to bring these back. We need to bring brownies back. You and I. Oof, and that would be good. That dulce de leche would be delicious on top of a brownie. Inside the brownie. Inside it? Yeah. How would you put it inside? I don't know. We'll figure that shit out. Or swirl it. That would be yummy. Swirl it in. But this dulce de leche is really good. And so 
And I'll be honest, I actually, the only can of Dusa Leche I had, or um, condensed milk I had in me was actually a fat-free condensed milk. And I've only said twice in my entire life. And that's what I had in my hands. Aren't they all fat-free, though? No, they are not. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, condensed milk is usually made with whole milk. Mm, oh, yeah, true. So, now, this is not a sugar-free recipe by any means of the imagination, okay? Yeah. Condensed milk with a fat-free nut has a fuck ton of sugar. It is sugar. And a cake box mix is going to have your sugar already in it. Mm-hmm. So this is not a substitute to eat sugar-free. Maybe to eat a little lower calorie, lower fat content, but it is not sugar-free in the least. So I don't know if this is, you cannot really label this as a healthy cake. You can label it as a quick cake. It's like a snacking what, cake. It's a snack cake. It's an easy cake. And I think yeah. it's a really good cake for like a beginning baker because I you agree. don't have anything else. And you use a blender, which I think people like. The blender, yeah. I'm not a blender person. I hate blenders because I hate cleaning them. And I know there's easy ways to do it, but I just don't like cleaning a blender. Take it apart. Put it in your fucking dishwasher. Oh, but I don't use dishwashers. I know you don't. I don't like them. I think they're disgusting. Okay, well, they work. But I do like this idea very, very much because I am super into box cake mixes and making them kind of spectacular. And I think this is a really great idea. And I like that you added eggs to it because... I don't think you can make a good cake without eggs. That's just me. No. That's why like, being vegan makes it, no sense. Just stick with the vanilla cake. You could do like a carrot cake mix and it would go really good with it because the pineapple Ooh. will complement. Like I said, you don't really taste the pineapple at all. But I feel like the pineapple may have added like a little bit of a fruitiness, but it's not. It's like you eat it and you're like, what is that? It's moisture. That's, that, it, that's what it is. It's a lot of moisture. But I think like if you did a carrot cake box mix, it'd be really good with it. Chocolate won't be good, but I think a carrot cake or a spice mix or... As we entered the fall season, like a pumpkin um, muffin mix or something like that would be really good with it. This is a 100% and, fall recipe, I think. Yeah, this really is. And that Dusa Leche topping was perfect because it wasn't an overly thick icing. Right. And it was like a thin layer. And so it was really, really good. And, you know, and I, it's, it's a smaller cake. So I think I got like eight slices out of it. So it was still a decent, I mean, it's a circular cake. And I think it's a nine inch circle oh. used. That's so, not yeah. bad. No, I think I got like eight slices out of that. I have a question for you. Can you make this dulce de leche without a pressure cooker? I don't know. So some people say that you can put it in a pot and you have to boil it for a couple hours. And mm-hmm. I'll be honest, when I was thinking about this, I started looking up things because I kind of got curious on how it turns into dulce de leche. And I cannot repeat what it is because I have no idea. There's actually a scientific thing behind this on why the pressure creates what it creates. But I saw some people boil the can in a pot. I would imagine if you're going to boil it for a couple hours, you're going to have to keep adding water to it. I've seen some recipes where people have taken dulce leche out of the can and put it on like a medium heat on a saucepan and just keep... Or a frying right. pan, keep going at it. Um, that might take a long time too. What I like about this, it's no mess, no fuss, nothing. You just you know throw what? it in water. I want to give kudos to the first person who put a can inside of the pressure cooker and didn't there take it immediately. There was some wonderful, possibly you know, larger individual who said, "What?" And I can say that because I'm fat, so I can say that. Oh God! Who sat there and said, I "Wonder what happens with this?" Yeah, but I would have been scared. I would have thought like it would burst. That would be my fear. There is a possibility of it bursting. And yeah. that's what I was actually reading online. That's so petrifying. That's why they say, let it cool down before you touch it. Um, I've Ooh. done this a thousand times. It's never bursted on me. And this could also, I don't even know if it's an old wives tale or not. Remember, do you remember growing up? If like, at least with my mother, she used a pressure cooker. Like you have to stay out of the kitchen. Girl. Just like 10 feet away from the kitchen. Yes, don't yes. Come near it. Like it was like a gun. And that's because in the 1950s and shit like that, pressure cookers did explode, you know? But, you know, when we grew up, they kind of stopped doing that. Probably. My mom still has the old one that, like, goes chick 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 with the little thing on top that dances. My mom still has that one, too. That's so funny. And she has a new one. I always knew when my mother was using the pressure cooker, we were having ropa vieja for dinner that night. It's the best. Yeah. I always knew when I'll come over here, the we haven't done ropa vieja, have we? Mm-mm, I don't think we so. We should Maybe. do ropa vieja. We should. It's a good, it's a good recipe. Oh my gosh. It's cheap too. 
It is. It is actually it's pretty inexpensive for cheap. beef. Just, it's very cheap. Yeah. Anyway, you guys. Yeah, I, and you know, it's funny. Pressure cooker sound like kind of takes me back. It's almost kind of relaxing, isn't it? Like it's like yeah, because I remember living, living, living on the couch, something, and just knowing my mom's cooking when I hear the. And it always smelled so good when they. It always smelled cook. really good. Mm-hmm. Like Cuban cooking, like that's. It's Cuban cooking. So reminded my grandmother, reminded me of my mother. But do this. The, I'm telling you, this can, and you turn to dulce de leche, fucking changes your life. For real, and you can just eat it from a spoon because it's. You can just eat it with a spoon with a can. Yeah. I think like these are two different recipes I feel yes. that you're giving us and they're kind of invaluable because doctoring up a cake mix with fruit is amazing and having this spread is kind of almost like Nutella. You can put it yeah, on anything. It is. Yeah, it is. So thank you, Eric. I really appreciate this recipe and I, I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try sure. this condensed milk because I, I think it's like I owe it to my ancestors or something. I can't believe you've never done it. I know I've made it and I've, I've, you've eaten it with me. Yeah, no, I've eaten it a, a lot. My mom right. makes it. Right. I, I guess because she always made it. I don't know. I never. The one thing I can say is, listen, that shit becomes so addictive because it's so easy to make. Yeah. Okay? So this is something that I'm just going to give as a PSA here. Make this shit sparingly because it <laughs> is condensed milk. It's so addictive. It's, uh, <laughs> so it's not great for you one bit, but. Good for your soul. Every it's soul. good for your soul. So eat it sparingly. I like this. I'm gonna make this can, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call you as soon as I have it. Oh my god! And I'm telling you, open the can up and just take a bite. When it's like before you blend it up, because it changes the texture and the flavor. I swear to God, it does. I, I believe so you're adding air into it. So yeah. I swear to God, it does. Oh my god! When you take that first bite, it is so good. So yeah, please make this sparingly because this is it's so good. But make it. You can start welcoming in fall ever so slowly with a box in a can. You know what? I bet you, if you wanted to like spice it up a little more. You could probably, while you're whipping the dulce de leche, put a little cocoa powder in it. If you want to make it a chocolate dulce de leche, you can do Damn, that. you're like getting me I'm on a fucking roll right now. <laughs> you're getting me I mean, granted, I'm a purist when it comes to my condensed milk dulce de leche, but I bet you you can do that. You can throw a little vanilla extract in there, make it kind of, you Damn. know, just, you could throw, oh, put it, put the cake on with the dulce de leche and put a little finishing salt on it. That. Do that. Um, okay, I've, I've no finished. love your finishing salt. <laughs> yes. Okay, listen. I just finished. <laughs> just yeah, <laughs> exactly. Listen, like you'll go to the grocery store and yell at me for buying tangerines that are peeled, but a seventeen dollar, you know, you must have finishing a- salt. You're like, why well, I'm buying three of them. Okay. And so. I really do have many different kinds, and they're probably all the same, but there's something about finishing salt that really gets me going. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm telling you, I can go on with this. Put this on like sugar cookies and put a finishing salt on it. This Dusa de Leche will change your life. It is really good. All right. Well, thank you so much, Eric. I super appreciate this. And I'm going to try it. And I think it's excellent for fall. And I know that food of cures can make this easily. And I know everybody has an Instapot at this point. I feel like who doesn't? Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't have one, they're, they're, they're not expensive. They really aren't. And they're they're useful. When I first got mine, I swear to God, I cooked in everything in it. I was like, I used to make rice in that shit. I was nervous to use mine in the beginning. The thing is, at Instapot, you have to get comfortable with it. Yeah. it's And when know. you get comfortable with it, you'll see that there's a lot of value to it. There, there's a lot of really cool things. And look stuff up online. Look it up on TikTok. And you'll see a lot of neat things you can do with your Instapot. You made I a know. whole chicken fricassee for me in Instapot. Yes. Yeah, and you if you're on a budget, they're your best friend because you can get a tough piece of meat and really break it down in no time. Yeah. And they're kind of cool. I mean, you could saute in it. You're going to pressure cook in it. You're going to. There's a lot of neat things. You can make yogurt with it. There's a bunch of things you can do with it. All right. Yeah. So get on it. We'll put a link for a pressure cooker so you guys can like get an idea of what we have. The Instapot. Yeah. And uh, if you're into it, just take a look and see and invest in one, because especially now with the warmer weather, you're going to have more stews and more braised meats. It'll really cut down on time so you can have these meals at the ready sooner. And you don't have to Cooler be weather, Mary Ellie. You said warmer weather. <sighs> well, you know, I guess it's a, fro- a what is it? a Floridian slip. That's what that was. <laughs> That's hysterical. See what I did there? Smart huh? Question. That yeah. was a smart joke. I, like, I don't know if it's smart, but it was creative. <laughs> All right, y'all. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast player. Join our newsletter. And if you want to support us, you can join for a monthly fee, which supports the podcast. Or you can just get it for free. We haven't really sent out anything in a little while, but we will soon. Now the fall gets our like creative juices flowing. The fall gets me excited. Ooh, this Summer, is like- not so much. But fall, like, 
Yeah, summer's a fucking bummer, and it rhymes. It fucking sucks, guys. I didn't. I didn't want to tell you this back in June, but now they're at the tail end of this. Summer fucking blows. I'm saying, if it is your favorite season, you know, I'm happy for that that adventure for you. But no more margaritas. I'm not. I'm. I'm like. I'm oh. done with margarita, and I love a good margarita, but I'm done with it. Adios. My pumpkin spice and my apple cider. I'm ready. All right, y'all. Join us next week. We can't wait to hear from you, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.